Welcome to In The Know, Money with Marseille Martin. Today we're gonna to be talking about the concept of saving money and why you need to do that and how to get started. See, saving requires planning, but don't worry, we're gonna break it all down in this episode. From long-term accounts like 401ks and IRAs to a regular savings account, financial expert extraordinaire and founder of the broke black girl, Daisha Kennedy, is here to explain what this all means. Daisha, hello! I am so excited to talk to you today. I am like my glasses twin. I see that we twin in today. Yeah. I, I I'm just excited, really. Um, but I mean, I know you. But just tell the audience a little bit about yourself. What do you do, and what do you present? My name is Daisha Kennedy. I'm a financial activist, creator of The Broke Black Girl. It is a digital community that I created that acts as a safe space for African American women to discuss personal finance. What is the longest amount? of time you saved for a single purchase and what was it for? Oh, wow. Uh, it actually, to be honest, it actually was just a couple of months ago. I would say five months. I set out a goal. I just woke up in January and I said, I want to relocate to another state. I did not have a savings account for that particular thing. So I said, okay, I'm going to see if I can reduce my expenses as low as I possibly can, try to save as much money as I can. And I set out a goal to save $50,000 as quickly as possible. Sometime in May, I reached around $46,000. So what does it really mean to save money? So I think the misconception is that people think that as long as I'm not spending money, then I'm saving money. And that's really not the case. Saving is not the absence of spending. So let's say you have money in your checking account and you've paid all of your bills for the month. And just for numbers and an example, at the end of the month, you have $500 sitting in your account. On one end, a person may think that they're saving money just because they have money left over, but that money is sitting idle. It doesn't have anything to do. So saving money is giving your extra money something to do. So at the end of the month, that same $500 can now be split into your relocation fund, your entertainment fund, your any type of savings go it really could be anything but it's giving your money something to do so that really is what it comes down to putting money to the side with the intention of it being used for something at a later purpose well then honestly what kind of different types of saving accounts are there because I, there's a lot of them and then i hear like different types like with yeah. the I don't even know where to start, but like how, how many are there and what do they like each one do? It's so many different type of savings account. Of course, you have your normal savings account, which is just a savings account that you can open up with the bank. In many cases, it has less to none type of interest that you will gain. And then you have your high yield savings account, which is similar but a little bit different from a traditional savings account because it does gain interest then you have savings accounts such as your health savings account which is tax-free money that you can save in an account that you can use for medical expenses and then you go a little bit deeper into things like 401ks and the iras and a 401k is usually associated with your employer it's a retirement plan it allows employees to save money and invest for their retirement retirement and an IRA is similar, very similar to that, but it's usually associated with entrepreneurs, freelancers, people that are self-employed, independent contractors, and it's a tax advantage account that individuals use to invest for their retirement. So, okay. So savings is a very big deal, I hear. Yes. But I mean, is there a way you can still like buy the things you want and like turn up all you want, but <laughs> still have to like be <laughs> be cautious about like the things that the things that you're doing but you don't want to be like I, I don't know but you don't want to be too cautious because then you don't want to get overwhelmed by it but what is the best way of going by saving money without being overwhelmed or stressing out over it yes yeah, so I do not believe in living a boring lifestyle while trying to reach your goals I think that you can still have fun you can turn up you can do the things that you enjoy while still actively saving money and that goes to having a savings account like I have a savings account that's my turn up account so I can take money from that account go out with my friends I can party I can enjoy myself and I don't have the weight on my my shoulder that maybe I'm dipping into my rent money. Maybe I'm dipping into my car note money. I don't have that on my shoulders because I've been saving in this specific account 
for that reason. So it's like it's like organizing in a way. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like making sure each thing is in its own place and yes. you can take it out when you need it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that makes total sense. All right, well, what is the difference between saving and investing? Saving, again, is putting money to the side to reach a specific goal. Investing is putting your money into something specific with the expectation that its value will grow over time. Saving money, you're putting that money with the intention that you're probably going to use it, let's say, within 6 to 12 months. That that normally is the, the goal that people have in mind, that I'm going to be using this money within a year. With investing, it's, it's, a, it's a weight game. You're putting money there. You're not really in a rush to see a return on, on it because you know it may take some time for this money to grow. This is money that you're okay with having with taking a risk that you may lose it it may grow it may decrease but this is the money that you're putting there with the expectation that it will grow over time versus with saving you're just putting money to the side for a specific reason well how do i track my savings and is there a workflow or an app that you can suggest or any steps in that oh yes yeah. so Right now, everybody uses apps. Um, there are so many different budgeting apps. I mean, literally getting on your phone and searching a budget app, you're going to get an app. But one thing that I've learned when it came to tracking my money and being more involved with my finances is I have to be honest with myself. I will get on this phone and I will get distracted. I will intend to open up my budget app and then I'm on social media. I'm scrolling here. I'm scrolling there and I'm completely distracted. Now my energy is gone. I don't even want to deal with the budgeting app. So because I am self-aware and I'm very honest with myself, I do not use budgeting apps. And if someone is like me and you know that you're easily distracted with your phone, this may be a great tip for them. I still use Microsoft Excel Sheets, which is probably the oldest trick in the book, but it works for me. It keeps me involved. And actually, Microsoft Excel has a very new tool called Money in Excel. And then what it allows you to do is connect to your bank account. So it will pull all of your transactions right from your bank account and do most of the calculations for you. But me sitting down away from distractions, away from my phone, it's just me in this Excel sheet on my computer. It really keeps me involved. That is so important to know. Thank you so You're much, Daisha, for coming to talk to me. This yes. is so amazing. I've been me and my mom and my whole family have been watching you for so long and I am so happy and proud of Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. No, I can't wait to see what you do next. And do you have any other advice for just kids out there in general who want to get into just saving their money? Yes, if today is the perfect day to start. If you're looking for a sign, if you were wondering when should you start saving today, today is, is the day. Don't waste another day. The advantage that most young people have is time and it's on your side. Time is on your side. Yeah. I know that's right. Well, thank you so much, Daisha. And that is all for this episode of In the No Money with Marseille Martin. Thank you so much to Daisha Kennedy. And now we have a much better understanding of what it really means to save our money and why we should all be doing it. So thank you. So when I was younger, back in my little Elm, Texas days where um, I was in elementary school, um, I I would say I was a I was a hustler every now and then trying to at least get what I want. There was this fundraiser at my school where um they at the end of it they ended up like you're able to like ride on this limo and I think you get pizza or something. So my parents were teaching me what to do with my money when I want to buy different things. So you know, I buy different things, you can get money back. So then I would save it up. I was trying to figure out a way where I could save up my money to buy cookies to to sell it, you know, to sell it out to people. Cause you know, like, you know, in, in, in lunch, they don't really have like desserts and all that. They had just cold grilled cheeses and all that. So I was like, if I can bring some like yummy cookies, heck yes. I was like, I'd be, I'd be popping. It just became a hit. I was just like the girl with all, all the yummy cookies and they were asking me every day if I got them. And I was like, no, nah, sorry y'all. We ran out, and next thing you know, I was in that dang limo about to get me some pepperoni pizza. And I was like, <laughs>